Good morning everyone. I hope you are enjoying the foundation week and for today we will be discussing our first lesson for the fourth quarter and we are now on the last quarter. So congratulations everyone and I hope you'll continue doing your best until the end of the quarter. Alright, so let's start with our first topic. We will be discussing technical terms used in research. So grade 10, you are now on the final phase of your junior high school, right? And in this stage, you will still make a lot of discoveries that will help you become more enhanced and thinking critically through research. So this lesson will help you in your research work. So please listen attentively all right and our learning objectives for this lesson so after going through this lesson you are expected to first define research next familiarize the technical terms used in research so here you don't have to memorize okay but you have to understand and familiarize the technical terms okay and you have to distinguish technical terms used in research. And the last one, formulate interview guide questions or survey questionnaire. Okay, so those are our objectives in this lesson. And now let us define what is a research. So a research refers to a formal and systematic application of an inquiry employing a scientific means of studying problems. So research establishes facts and new findings through a systematic investigation to contribute to an existing body of knowledge. All right. And of course, we are going to talk about the technical terms used in research. So let's move on to the next slide. First, we have research title. It is a subject or a topic that a researcher finds interesting when conducting a research. And it needs to be narrowed down that will focus on the main idea. Okay. Next, we have the abstract. It summarizes all sections and helps readers decide whether or not to read the entire report. Okay. And we have introduction, of course, it presents background information, scope, and focus of the research paper. Next, we have the literature review. So it provides a review of what others have written or research on concerning the topic. So it demonstrates, no, demonstrates rather, it demonstrates knowledge and understanding of the academic literature on a specific topic all right so th that is literature review next we have methodology so it explains how the research was conducted this include the research design population and sampling procedure research instrument data gathering procedure and data analysis procedure so it is a specific procedure or techniques used to identify to select what else to process and analyze information about a topic so that is methodology or the method how the research was conducted okay next we have the discussion all right so it presents the information gathered through the research and the purpose of discussion is to interpret and describe the significance of your findings. Okay. Next, we have conclusion. So, conclusion provides the summary of the research. It brings the report to closure by giving emphasis to ideas stated previously. And the function of your paper's conclusion is to restate the main argument. Okay, it reminds the reader of your or rather of the strengths 
of your main arguments and it reiterates the most important evidence supporting those arguments. So that is conclusion. Next, we have the results. So it contain other related information such as graphs, charts, tables, and list. Next, we have cultural mapping. So it refers to a research tool to holistically understand the cultural assets of place based on the local knowledge of people. So it is a mode of inquiry and a methodological tool that aims to make visible the ways local stories, practices, uh, relationships, memories, and rituals constitute places as meaningful locations, okay? That is cultural mapping. How about the interview? So it is a conversational practice where knowledge is produced through the interaction between an interviewer and an interviewee or a group of interviewees. Okay, next we have interview guide. So it summarizes the content that researchers cover during interviews. So at one extreme, it may provide very minimal directions leading to less structured interviews that are designed primarily to explore the participants' own perspective on the research topic, okay? And of course, creating an interview guide helps interview uh, research in number of ways. So it can be a list of high-level topics that uh, you plan on covering in the interview, okay? So you have to prepare your interview guide, all right? Here are some tips in formulating questions. First, pose open rather than close questions. It should be clear and focused. In other words, the question should be clearly state what the writer needs to do. Next, uh, sequence interview questions from broad to narrow. And of course, your question shouldn't be too broad and not too narrow. It should be, uh, or rather, it should have an appropriate scope. Next, avoid the inclusion of possible responses in questions. And pose a, one question at a time. And your question, not too easy to answer, and it shouldn't be um, too difficult to answer. And the last one, you have to avoid posing multi-part questions, all right? Next, we have the questionnaire. So it is a set of questions to gather information in a survey. It may be in a form of open-end format that allows the respondents to answer in many ways he or she wishes in his or her term. Or it can be a multiple choice format that presents a question which is followed by a set of options. Also, it can be a checklist uh, having a free response option. Okay. Next, we have survey. So it is a statistical analysis of answers to pull a sample of a population. Example, uh, if you want to determine opinions or knowledge, all right? It is also this, uh, defined as the collection of information from sample of individuals through their responses to questions. So that is survey. Next, we have plagiarism, all right? So what is plagiarism? It occurs when, I, when, rather, when ideas, information, and even pictures are used without proper acknowledgement of the original source, okay? So, in short, uh, it is when you present someone else's work or ideas as your own without their consent, okay? And also, by incorporating it into your work without full acknowledgement, all published and unpublished material 
whether in manuscript or printed, is covered under this definition. Okay, so that is plagiarism. And how to avoid plagiarism? Let's find out on the next slide. Okay, so you can avoid it by providing in text citation or parenthetical text from another source. So here are some examples. First one is running text. So like for example, according to Shane, so that is the author of the text, then you have to put uh, the year it was published, so 2021. Use of in-text citation shows that the idea is not yours and that you acknowledge its rightful source. Okay, so running text. Next, within parentheses. Okay, so the use of in-text citation shows that the idea is not yours and that you acknowledge its original source. So you have to put the name of the author and the year it was published okay so you can avoid plagiarism by using running text or within parentheses all right next we have reference which is a list of all sources used in research it can be described as giving credit with citation okay Next, we have appendix, so it contains related information such as graphs, charts, tables, and lists. So it contains supplementary material that is not an essential part of the text itself, but may be helpful in providing a more comprehensive understanding of the research problem. Okay, and those are some technical terms used in a research, okay? And this is all for today. So be prepared for our live discussion next meeting. Again, this is Teacher Mitch, your English teacher. Goodbye, everyone. Have a nice day.